We will start tonight in Alberta, where the final countdown to Election Day in one of this country's biggest provinces has started. The race from day one has been neck and neck. The United Conservative Party's Danielle Smith and NDP's Rachel Notley locked in almost a dead heat with about a fifth of eligible voters undecided. Today, the UCP got an anticipated endorsement from their federal cousins, Tory leader Pierre Polyev, urging the province to vote blue. Conservatives will fight the carbon tax, stand up for Alberta and its energy sector, and unleash the full potential of our Alberta economy in order to grow and prosper in the future. That means more money for schools and hospitals. In other words, vote for Alberta, vote Conservative, vote early, vote now. Let's talk now about the state of the race in these final days with campaign leads. Erica Brudis is the Director of Issues Management and Campaign Operations for the United Conservative Party. And Shifra Gadamsetti is the NDP's Senior Communications Advisor. Hi to both of you. Great to have you with me this evening. I appreciate you making the time. I wanted to start off kind of asking you a strategy question uh, and get both your perspectives on this. Erica, we're into these last uh, few days. Given the, the tight nature of the race, how significant, how important are these strategically for your party? Yeah, I mean, every day of an election counts. Um, our focus has been since day one and will continue to be on talking to Albertans that think about things that matter to them. We focus on the economy, on affordability, on public safety. These are things that we hear at the doors continuously and things that, uh, you know, obviously we have a strong record on. So, you know, going in, we're going to be consistent on our messaging. We've seen the NDP pull from their playbook of 2019, where they've now shifted into to a full-on fear and smear. Uh, and as we saw in the clips, you know, they're very much focused on running away from their record uh, as they did in 2019 because they don't want Albertans to be reminded of that. Let me ask you, because right after the debate, uh, Shifra, we had a uh, pollster on who said, listening to the arguments made by Ms. Notley and Ms. Smith, that if the uh, UCP wants this to be about the economy, the NDP wants the ballot box question to be about health care. Do you think that's true? Well, I, Bashi, uh, I, I'd have to slightly disagree because I don't think we're trying to shape a ballot box question. Our priorities are those that reflect the things that are most important to Albertans and their families. And right now, they're telling us that healthcare is the most important thing. Um, we're seeing wait times at multiple hospitals and urban centers go above 12 hours. Yesterday, we had 190 doctors right here in Calgary, where I'm at, um, sign a letter talking about how our system is on the brink of collapse. 30 uh, physicians in Danielle Smith's own hometown um, have raised similar concerns last week, and we just haven't seen any improvement. Uh, you know, I think it's quite concerning when we think about how long it might take an ambulance to arrive if one of us were to have a heart attack or another medical emergency. Like, these are the priorities that are on the top of Albertans' minds, and um, we are responding to their needs. We're talking about things that matter to I'm them. I want to follow up with you on that, and then I have a challenge for your uh, colleague Erica in a second on the same issue. I want to talk about both healthcare and the economy. My follow-up to you on uh, on the subject of healthcare, Shifra, is I remember covering the exact same issues, particularly when you talk about the ambulance, more than 10 years ago. Does the NDP not bear some responsibility as well for not improving the situation during the four years your party was in office? Well, I, I do believe that we've seen an exacerbation considering the entire world has gone through a global public health crisis and at a time when we needed our government to show up and uh, support us. We had their health minister ripping up contracts, showing, on do showing up on doctor's driveways, screaming at them, and we haven't seen any consistent improvement. You know, we've seen the firing of, of public, public service staff. Um, there's just been no investment in providing these services, and Albertans continue to suffer. It's been four Four years of continual, um, continual challenge without any improvement, and I think the majority of Albertans are extremely tired of waiting. So it's time and for it's a change. Certainly, I, I, yeah, and it's certainly the UCP. I'm not trying to abdicate any responsibility, and I have questions on exactly what you just said for Erica in a second. But that, but your answer didn't reflect the substance of my question, which was your party was in power for four years. It's not like the situation was so greatly improved during that time that Albertans wouldn't be kind of, it wouldn't be understandable for them to think, hey, why should we trust them again for another four years if things didn't improve with healthcare the first time around to the degree that we might have hoped? 
Well, Vashi, you said it. You said it. It's about trust. And right now, doctors across this province do not trust Danielle Smith. Albertans across this province do not trust Danielle Smith. Um, you know, we've seen it even with uh, the previous leader. There was a public health care guarantee and that wasn't met. We uh, doctors have been leaving this province and telling us directly that they're doing that because the relationship has been um, completely decimated. They'd rather live elsewhere um, and maybe uh, for, for a, a, a lower economic opportunity because they have stability, they have respect. Um, and we just haven't seen that in the last four years. So if it if it is about improvement, um, it's really actually about trust and leadership. And Rachel Notley is willing to come to the table and do that. Just recently, she had an audience with um, the Alberta Medical Association. Uh, we received extremely positive feedback for our proposals right now. We're talking about family health teams. We're going to make sure that Albertans receive a doctor when they need one. They're not going to be waiting for two weeks. We're going to address physician burnout. And we're going to engage in the largest healthcare recruitment strategy that this province and the country has ever seen. And it's going to go extremely well. Okay, Erica, uh, I want to pick up sort of on some of the points that uh, your colleague Schiffer made there and ask you, I, I did find it interesting in the debate that Ms. Smith was saying things are getting better, just give us more time to, to make them even more better. And yet at the same time, we see, you know, positioned against that, this letter from ER doctors across the province who are saying things are actually at a, at a crisis point. Wait times are long. We know even to get a blood test, it can take like up to six weeks or something crazy like that. Does your party not bear responsibility for the way things are right now? And should Albertans have some doubt, just like I asked your colleague, in Danielle Smith's ability to improve the situation? Yeah, so unlike Shifra, I, I will answer your question directly. I do think that all governments over the past decade do have some ownership. Danielle Smith has been very clear, and even in response to the ER doctors, that they're there is a situation at hand. We need to continue to do stuff. There is more work to be done. And what she said is that's exactly why she brought in the reform she did. You know, the NDP spent four years inflating the middle management as opposed to focusing on frontline healthcare workers. And that's exactly where Danielle Smith and the UCP have focused. And, you know, I know she has said there's more work to be done, but our plan is working. We've seen, you know, uh, accreditations for internationally uh, trained nurses to be able to be registered here. That is start of the process. We've seen, Shifra talked about EMS wait times. We have seen uh, the EMS times and red alerts reducing significantly. Does that mean that we have solved this um, outright? Absolutely not. And I think it's absurd for any political party to sit here today and say that they're going to come in and solve everything on day in day uh, on day one. Um, Danielle Smith is has humility on it, saying there's more work to be done. And that's exactly what the United Conservative Party plans to do. To, to be fair, I'm not sure the NDP is saying we're going to solve everything at once. They're just saying that their plan to solve things is ambitious. Uh, just to challenge you on the point that you're making, I understand that you know there's there's more work to be done, and you can say that. But the point that Ms. Smith was making was that already a lot of good has happened, and I just don't understand how. That can be true at the same time as doctors saying that there's a crisis in ERs and that the reason there's a crisis is because so many people don't have a family doctor. Your party was in power for a number of years. Why didn't you fix that problem? Yeah, I mean, and I'm not going to sit here and blame a pandemic or anything like that. I do think that that did not help some of the initiatives that the United Conservative Party campaigned on in 2019. But I do think, you know, something that we've talked about, and I know during leadership, all of the candidates of the United Conservative Party, as well as from day one when Danielle took office, have talked about rural health care, getting physicians in place. Um, we have incentivization for them to stay in their communities and practice. Um, again, uh, I would say if we would have had that leadership under the NDP four years ago, we would have those doctors in the field and in the province now and unfortunately we're, we're stuck here playing catch up but it is a priority I think everyone can agree everyone should see a family have a family doctor no one is going to pay to see a family doctor but it does take time to train and recruit and have those people here and and they've stolen a lot of uh, our plans already from what we announced in budget 2023 Okay, I know this debate could continue for a while, and I will keep covering it right up in, until and through the election. I just have less than a minute left, and I wanted to ask you guys, since you're both working behind the scenes on the campaign, and a lot of people interested in politics are watching this show, if you could summarize, Shifra, the get-out-the-vote strategy for the NDP uh, come election day, is it focused on Calgary? What's the, what, 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 what do you think the secret to your success will be? Honestly, I just, it's, it's 
incredibly simple. We have an excellent message. It reflects the priorities of Albertans. We are building momentum. Every um, rally that we've held has gone over capacity. We are seeing hundreds of people come out, thousands um, in some places. There's been overflow. And when we ask the room, you know, how many of you are first time voters? More often than not, half of the room raises their hands. And that tells us that our message is resonating, that people want a leader they can trust, a government that they can trust, um, and, and something that's going to bring stability uh, to to the province and, and a vision that makes sense and is based in um, things that we are very excited to build. Erica, I know getting the message out is, is one part of getting out the vote, but what else is your party employing? What can you kind of share with people watching tonight? Yeah, we're, we're focusing on, again, the strong record that the UCP has held. There's There was lots of undecideds that we're seeing supporting us because, to be honest, I think that the biggest um, failure of the NDP campaign was their business tax hike. We've seen a lot of businesses supporting mm -hmm. a lot of uh, validators that that plan doesn't work, and it's, it's scaring a lot of folks about if they're going to have employment under an NDP and that's we're really going to focus on talking about taking care of them um, and making sure that we have a strong economy. We are have a ton of questions we'll on affordability and the economy. Success. Yeah we're, we're going to talk I promise you we're convening again on election day and and right up in the lead up to it and I promise you we'll, we'll focus in on the economy then. I do have to leave it there I'm out of time. I appreciate both of you making the time for this. I know it's a really busy time for both your campaigns so thank you Erica Brudis and Shifra Gadamsetti.